I'm here in Dallas at LCU. I spoke just a little bit ago on the new covenant and how perfect what Jesus has done is and how his presence is now our law. But on the way here, I felt from the Lord to turn to Psalm 25. And as I began to look at it, I saw a few things that I wanted to share with you that I felt would really encourage you and strengthen you right where you are in your life. Psalm 25, it says, Who is the man who fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way he should choose. His soul will abide in prosperity and his descendants will inherit the land. The secret of the Lord is for those who fear him and he will make them know his covenant. My eyes are continually toward the Lord. He will pluck my feet from the net. This brilliant technique of rhetorical questions is common in the psalmist. By it, he's able to establish his subject, guide you indirectly to question whether or not you are this man. And such thoughts intrigue you to look deeper and find out what it means to be that man. Patience in this text will cause the glimmer to begin to shine through. David does not immediately tell you the definition of what it is to fear the Lord. He rather intensifies the excitement that his rhetorical question has already set in motion. He speaks of one of humanity's greatest desires, something common to anyone who longs to make life a success and joy. He tells us that God will literally instruct this man in his personal life decisions. Needless to say, this implies conscious communication from God to this man. And even at such an early point in his attempt to woo the reader into the knowledge of God, his words cause the reader to look further and discover if his heart could actually be one to receive such a divine shepherding. And the Spirit's pen is not finished with his excitement. David still refuses to divulge what it actually is to fear the Lord. He describes another wonderful privilege of what it is to fear the Lord. A wonderful privilege to those who fear the Lord. Prosperity is the word that he chooses. An absolute meeting of every need, not lacking anything. And it's interesting that he refuses to limit it to material thing by using the words his soul and he refuses to limit it to times and seasons by using the words abides in the man who fears the lord will have prosperity in his soul abide in prosperity in his soul what greater prosperity could there be than the internal absolute satisfaction with god himself rest seems to fall miserably short in explaining such a fullness. And in keeping with the nature of the great father of all, the blessing falls down to his descendants. This blessing is generational. The man who fears the Lord, even his children, will inherit the land. If these techniques were not brilliant enough, the spirit-inspired psalmist modulates the text by masterfully unveiling what it actually is to fear the Lord. And he unveils this together with the highest benefit of fearing the Lord. He says, the intimate knowing of God. Such a direct experience is said to be for those who fear the Lord. How great is the sweetness you have stored up for those who fear you. God himself has reserved himself for those who choose to cherish Him above all. Intimate with God, the knowing of God. Such stirring words seem unimaginable. It secures both personal communication with God and individual experience of God. The word intimate can only be pointing to loving solitude with God alone. That is the beauty of the fear of the Lord. 
no others. Him. One. Only. We could set our Bibles down and settle in the dreamy wonder of what it is to actually live in fellowship with God. Fellowship with God performs a work in the soul that nothing else can. It's a revelation, if you will. A revelation far beyond the explanations of the wise. A revelation that is deeper than the depths plunged by generations of expositors. It is God himself and his covenant. We must believe we cannot see it unless he shows it. We are wide-eyed, blind without him. We could memorize every crevice and corner of the new covenant, but to actually see it, our hearts need divine illumination. If the writer ceased his script at this point, it would be wondrous beyond all thoughts of men. It would be the uncreated light shining into the soul. But he chooses not to abandon us here, but to lift us up into the kind of life that bears such radiance ourselves. He merges the value of intimate loving contact with God and revelation of the wonderful covenant with practical daily life. <clears throat> he says, my eyes are continually toward the Lord. This is an attentiveness to the person of God, a fixation, a transfixed heart. It is a transfixed seeing set in motion by a transcendent sight. It is a transfixed staring set in motion by a transcendent seeing, a radiance that gives true sight to the eyes, a living by looking and a looking in the midst of living. What kind of looking, you might ask? David says, he will pluck my feet out of the pit. It is a dependent looking. You will do it, O Lord. Your power, your hands, your keeping. So what is the conclusion of these verses from Psalm 25? Well, the man who fears the Lord is the one guided by God. The one whose heart is completely satisfied with God alone. The one who enjoys intimate fellowship with God. The one who has been privileged to the vibrant understanding of his covenant. One who lives in genuine dependence, looking with love upon God himself. I pray for you that the Lord would grant you the spirit of the fear of the Lord to settle the issue. It is only you, Lord. There are no others. And may the Lord guide you, satisfy you, literally bring you into the intimate love exchange with his person that grants a revelation of his covenant, causing your heart to look while you live and live by looking in great dependence upon him. God bless you. Don't forget to subscribe. And thank you to all those who are continually supporting us on our channel as we seek to bring the church into a deeper awareness, consciousness, and experience of God's presence in their daily lives. God bless you.